perspective. So what is perspective? Well, prior to the Renaissance time, uh, artists didn't really use perspective very much in artwork. Uh, perspective is the way that you see things, how things look three-dimensional. And what I mean by people didn't really use perspective, they knew it was there. It was just with art, they were more focused on telling a story rather than making sure that everything was precise. So, for instance, in this artwork right here, this artwork tells a story of an invading army. Pretty straightforward. We get that. Now, if this city were actually drawn to correct proportion, well, these people would be massive. They would be 30, 40 foot tall. And not only that, this wall would probably be setting on an angle kind of like that. I mean, it would not be practical. That ladder right there would be taller than most people. I mean, why would he even use a ladder? I mean, look, that guy can literally just walk over the wall. Perspective did not matter in art until the Renaissance because they were more focused on telling a story. Now, in the Renaissance, it kind of shifted. The Renaissance time era, they decided, hey, let's maybe we can tell a story and have proper perspective. So they actually developed a method of perspective. And it's called, well, perspective. That's what it is. Now, there's different types of perspective. The one thing that we're going to be looking at is one-point perspective. And what perspective is, it basically means that at one point, everything converges into one place. So all the lines that are created in this artwork actually go down and meet at one center point. That is called the vanishing point. That is where everything eventually leads down to. And whenever you have artwork like that, it makes things get smaller as it gets further away from you. That gives you the illusion of depth and distance in your artwork. And that's what perspective does. So the terms that we want to look at today, we want to look at vanishing point, horizontal lines, and vertical lines. Now, like I said, the vanishing point is where all lines eventually meet. They all meet right there. And if you draw a line straight down through here, connecting all of these things together, they will all meet right there. Just like the railroad tracks, the lines on the walls, the ceiling, the telephone poles, they all meet right there at the vanishing point. Then we want to look at horizontal lines. And horizontal lines just go left to right. That's it. They go boop, boop. That's it. Straight line, left to right. The next thing we want to look at is vertical lines. And vertical lines go up and down. Up, down, that's it. Just a straight line up and down. It doesn't curve. So in a one-point perspective drawing, there is only three types of lines. Okay? There's vertical lines, horizontal lines, and then lines that go to the vanishing point. If it is a diagonal line, it has to go to the vanishing point. Okay, so now that we got the recap done, how many vanishing points do you think that there can be in an artwork? Well, typically artworks have one to three, but you can actually have as many vanishing points as you want. For instance, Van Gogh in this artwork has a vanishing point. Can you guess where you think the vanishing point is? Well, the vanishing point's actually right there in the window. And you can see that by lining up the bedpost right here, up top, the horizon line right there, and in the ceiling going down. All of those lines, oh, and the chair, all of those lines line up to the vanishing point. What about this artwork? Can you see the vanishing point in here? In actuality, there are two vanishing points. And you can see them just like that. So the first vanishing point, you can actually see on screen, it's that right there. And the other vanishing point would actually be about right here, maybe? Yeah, about right there. So that one is off screen and you can't have vanishing points off screen. This is an example of a three point perspective where you actually have one 
perspective being up off the paper and then you have perspective on the other two sides one over there and one back here and it creates kind of like a uh, cityscape kind of angle like you're looking up at it it's pretty neat